Hello and welcome to Chronological Clone Wars, presented by The Pod Awakens. My name is Jordan. With me on his first watch of The Clone Wars is Logan. Logan, we've done it. We've reached season six. How are you? Oh, sad. Um, I love this show. Uh, it's going to go up there with one of my favorite shows as far as Disney Plus streaming. Like, it really has been... Um, I mean, I, I'd heard, always heard it was really good, but it's been shockingly good. Like, I, I would say that if you're a fan out there and you're just catching this for some reason, or, you know, you've only watched the, a couple of uh, episodes or for some reason someone across the podcast and listen to this, but it, it is, I highly recommend it um, as far as the, the whole show is concerned. Maybe you're, you know, listening to the podcast because it's the next one up on the podcast list, but yeah. I love this show. I'm going to miss it, um, but really excited to see where these next two seasons go because I, I feel like we got a lot of wrapping up to do and getting to a point in which we all know comes. I think that'll be really interesting. Yeah, uh, including season six, there's only 25 episodes left, right? Because there's 12, mm -hmm. uh, 13 this season and 12 the next season. So we're, we're really close to the home stretch here. Mm-hmm. Um, crazy. It's like once we reach season six, and also like season six so far is a banger right now. These four episodes, <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy to be talking about these four episodes here. Uh, which let me do our little uh recap here. We're talking season six, episode one, The Unknown, directed by Bosco Ng and written by Katie Lucas. The synopsis on Disney Plus is a clone trooper suffers a mysterious mental illness, and it premiered March 7th, 2014, as all of these did on Netflix. That's weird. I don't say the Cartoon Network anymore. They're all Netflix now uh, until season seven. Then we had Conspiracy, directed by Brian Kalen O'Connell, also written by Katie Lucas. Fives uncovers a secret in the Kaminoan cloning program. Then we had Fugitive, directed by Danny Keller, written by Katie Lucas. Fives un uh, uncovers a construct in the brains of all clone troopers. And then we had Orders, directed by Kyle Dunleavy, written by Katie Lucas. Fives' quest for answers bring him to Coruscant. All right, Logan, give me your first thoughts here. As you had questions, you mentioned this a few weeks ago, about the clones turning and what will make Order 66 mm -hmm. happen and all that. And I said, you'll get your answers, and you got them here. What was your thoughts yeah. on this arc here? These are probably, I mean, these four episodes are probably in this arc or either one or two on my whole list. Like, I, I really enjoyed this. I think the first one was also the clones when I think it was the the squadron that was like. Like rookies? Yeah, the rookies. All one. That. Um, so this is, I would say this is probably one. Like, this was, I really enjoyed this. Uh, I was, I mean, it really was. It was, uh, there were four episodes that I was just tuned into the whole time. Um, I started watching these these I had to watch last night and this morning. Um, but it was, I mean, it's so fresh in my mind. It was easily some of the best storytelling and I'm finally getting my answers as to, as to why order 66 is able to work, which I figured there had to be something like this, but you just never know when you're going into show. Cause you know, it's the dark side and these are clones. They're not, it's not like they're real easy or they're not real hard to manipulate, but they're harder to manipulate than, than like a droid or something, but I still feel like they're a little bit weak minded too. Well, especially because like th this show has done a really good job of making them all individuals, mm -hmm. right? So you have them all as individuals, and you're like, well, why would like Rex or Cody, right, mm -hmm. ever turn on Obi Wan and Anakin? Well, here's your answer it's programmed into them, and it always kind of made sense. I, I don't know what we originally ever really thought when like revenge of the Sith comes out and they say, or execute order 66. Um, originally you think like, maybe it's not programming. Maybe they just already had that. Like they read all of the orders in a manual and they're like, Oh yeah. Order 66. That's the Jedi one. All right, go ahead and do it. But the fact that you never see any of them, like, like question it really. Right. Like made you think maybe it's a little bit more than that. And that's what this show set out in these episodes to really show us. 
as uh we, well one we get to see something really cool twin jedis jedis are twins don't get that a lot luke and leia but i mean like other than luke and leia right you get uh these two jedi twins who have very similar names that i would confuse them and they look pretty much the same except for like the color of them is, is like one's green one's red uh they get this cool like flowy hair going too uh, but Tup, one of the clones in the 501st, just goes up there and shows him. What did you think was going on here? Did you start thinking like, oh, this is a execute order 66 situation? Or like, did you buy the virus of it all at first? Or I, I just like a one off. I just thought it was something was going wrong with this clone. And we were going to get more of like just another clone that had had, you know, something happen. And like along the lines of a story of uh, more of like, the Jedi wrong this group of clones, not necessarily like this is what's going to lead to order 66. But then I started to go, well, maybe like, maybe this is something that it's going to explain to us why order 66 is a thing and why it's able to be executed. But yeah, no, I didn't think right away it was order 66. I, I do think back when I was watching this last night, it's like, well, maybe it's just, you know, we're going to get an explanation as here's another batch of clones that, you know, might've had a problem with, jedi for some reason yeah uh really interesting episode here anakin's there he's with the two twins they're all using his 501st battalion and uh you know their plan was they're all three going to go down separate tracks like it's three hallways right they're all supposed to meet up at the one part and really force them back and um that that starts to go well, but once Tup kills the, the, the one Jedi, then they have to fall back. Everybody's kind of distracted. They're like, what did we just like see there? Um, and you know who else we, did you recognize the, the strategist for the separatists here? The tarantula looking dude. Oh yeah. 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 I was like, we've seen that before, but I couldn't yeah. remember where it was. The very first episode we ever talked about cat and mouse. Okay. Uh, I was like, oh my God, that's him. It was the clicking thing that got me. It's yes. like that spider looking thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah, hate yeah. it. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. That is, let me, let me pull it up. Uh, I got to remember his name. I forgot his name here. His name is. Oh, trench Admiral trench, right? Or uh, strategist trench. What was his first? thing here i don't i don't remember what his like title yeah his title was trench admiral trench i was right okay but he's got like this before he didn't have like the cybernetics yeah so that happened from i guess his adventure when he got like kind of defeated in the in the episode before uh, where it like blew up. So he did survive mm-hmm. um, and ends up, uh, you know, looking a little, a little rough there. Uh, so cool. I, I totally like, this is what happens when you watch them all very close together as I pick up on this stuff, because I started watching these in 2020, this, this set of episodes in the build up to, the release of season seven, I was like, Oh, I got to finish Clone Wars. But like when I watched cat and mouse, it was probably like 2009, you know? So I didn't remember Admiral trench, but now that we like watched these over the course from November to now, it's like, Oh yeah, I remember Admiral trench. And it was really cool to see him again. Uh, so he watches the footage back and sees Tup killed the Jedi. And he's like, I got to contact Dooku. Dooku is like, all right, thanks for that. He calls Palpatine and he says, a clone has executed the Jedi general. You know, do we think this is part of our programming? And Palpatine's like, all right, get the clone. He cannot ruin our plans. Palpatine's worried that if the, that if these things start going off early, the Jedi will like put a stop to it and it'll ruin his plan for order 66. So there you go with that. They have to take Tup to Coruscant. 
but before they can get there, Separatists attack and they take them. By the way, Admiral Ularen, who sounds like the guy from the intro, mm-hmm. right, when he does the news report. Definitely the guy from the intro. <laughs> he looks so much older now. So before yeah. he had kind of like the black hair and he was yep. a little, now he's got like the gray, he's got gray hair, gray mustache. The war has aged him. All right. He's not having a good time. Uh, just thought it was interesting how they did it. You know, Yularen is actually in Andor and he's also in uh, a new hope. Oh, did okay. you know that? I did not know that. If, if you look up his, um, Wikipedia, uh, you'll mm-hmm. see, what he looks like, but it, it's kind of the case of them taking somebody from a new hope and just being like, what's this guy's backstory. And then making mm-hmm. him look like that guy as he gets older is right. kind of what they did there. So it's interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he, he eventually becomes a bad guy. <laughs> like most of the people in this show. I was going to say, right. <laughs> it's like everybody. <laughs> Uh, so Anakin, Rex, and Fives are watching from space, and Anakin's like, I'll just go in there and wipe out all these droids. And Rex and Fives are like, well, we wouldn't be surviving if you did that. So they use a grapple gun, and they are able to break into the ship, and they decide to take Tup to Kamino instead to get looked at at his programming. The next episode, the ship arrived on Kamino, and Shock T, who's been stationed there, right? She knows Fives from when they did the whole rookies thing, and he has respect for her. And they want to check Fives for a virus. They're saying that Tup had a virus, and that's what the cause is. So they want to make sure since Fives was exposed, he doesn't have it. Rex gets sent back to go to Anakin. And Nala Say, who's one of the, the cloners, she works on Tup. Uh, no sign of an infection. Uh, Tup wakes up again and says, kill the Jedi, follow orders. Good soldiers follow orders. Uh they test fives. Everything seems normal, but he has to remain quarantined. Um, I love AZ the droid too here. He has yeah. a great line where he says, <laughs> I've always wanted to have human feelings, but I don't. So goodbye. <laughs> he just yeah. Rolls off. yeah it, but it is funny because as the show goes on, it, it seems very much like he does have human feelings. Like, like it's funny that he says that, that he alludes to that because I, I really did. I felt like, Okay, like he really likes fives. Like he, he tries to save fives live. Like it he does. It feels very well and he starts off very like you are not fives, you are uh C T five 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 five, yeah. right? And I'm A Z blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But because uh Fives is like, no, my name is Fives. And he starts calling AZ just AZ instead of his full mm-hmm. name. So AZ starts going by that and he'll say stuff to like Shock T when he's showing him when he's showing Shock T the the uh tumors, right? Mm-hmm. The inhibitor chips, where he says, This is the one from Fives, right? And he says oh, Fives. So easy, yeah. And he starts using that just yeah. colloquially with everybody. Uh really cool. But they yeah, they have this great debate about names and numbers. Uh, Shock T is all like, hey, since we ordered the clones to be made, we're actually in charge, Uh, which mm, not a good look for the (laughs) Jedi, but but a good point, a good point. Now, let's say talks to the prime minister and lets him know that the inhibitor chip went off early and he wants to notify who they call Darth Tyrannus, which is Count Dooku. This will be explained, I think, in a later episode this season, but the Kaminoans have... Kaminoans have no clue who they're talking to. They think Darth Tyrannus is part of the Jedi Order, right? Because mm-hmm. it, Darth Tyrannus says, oh, well, this chip is for rogue Jedi. Nobody can know except for me and Master Sifo Diaz who ordered the, the clones. So they have to keep that hidden from the rest of the Jedi. And when they hang up with Darth Tyrannus, they're like, these Jedi are a weird bunch, right? Like, they think what they're doing is still for the Jedi. Like they're, they don't know that this is part of the separatist plot. They're just kind of thinking that uh, the Jedi are this weird thing that want to have a fail safe, but they don't want any of the other Jedi to know about the fail safe. So I thought that was pretty interesting on how that's working out. Um, the Jedi want to examine Tup with the Force. So they say, like, bring Tup to us, right? Mm-hmm. We'll, we don't want to do anything that might 
kill Tup. We don't also want to do anything that might fry his brain. So bring him to the council and we'll like use the force to read his mind. Um, the issue is that the scan may kill Tup, but also the Kaminoans already want to just terminate him anyway. So it kind of a, does it matter? Like they, they freak out at fives for doing this thing. Cause it might kill him. But I'm like, as five says, like you were going to kill him anyway. Like, does it really yeah. matter? Right. Yeah, no, it's an interesting, it was one of my favorite conflicts too. It's like, well, I mean, we're the one that wanted, that ordered the clone army. I'm like, no, but we're the one that, that we're owner of them. And they're like, well, we made them. And it's like this battle between separatists, the Kaminoans, um, and then also the Jedi. And it's like, all right, who, and it is, I, I feel like the Jedi feel like they are, they're not only in command of them, but they're also, I feel like they feel they are like, well, we have these personal connections and relationships with them, so we know what's best for them. Um, for the Caminos, so they're, they're like, they're they're like, well, we were the ones that created them, and then the separatists are like, well, we just want the we just want the clones. <laughs> Give us the damn clones. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fives convinces Az to do the scan, and they do it, and they find out it's a tumor, or what they call a tumor. Um. Nala say hears about this. She's like, there is no tumor. Technically right. It's an inhibitor chip. <laughs> um, but Fives is like, we were not created to be disposed like this. And Nala say just has the words of perhaps you were. Which is true though, right? Like the clones were made to just be fodder for Palpatine's plan. They don't know that. But that is what they were. Now the Jedi treat them as actual people and individuals. So that kind of blossomed under the Jedi, but just interested in all is kind of like, well, perhaps you were because they were, you know, they were, they, they are kind of seen as their version of the droids, right. But that they can actually maybe think and strategize a little better than the droids. Um, there's a point where he's talking to AZ and AZ's like, but we will be disobeying orders. And he's like, yep, for the second time today. Uh, I just love how Fives is like kind of breaking AZ's will down to be like, no, we're doing this. Um, so they they cut into Tup for the tumor removal and uh, Tup does die. And Shock T calls Palpatine and says she wants to study the tumor. Palpatine wants it at the Coruscant Medical Center and she has to reluctantly agree but we learn her plan there is actually send it to the jedi first and then take it to palpatine she's like oh you never said what order <laughs> it's one of those like technically from a certain point of view <laughs> right. type of things so the next episode starts with fives under arrest and uh fives has to pass a physical and then he'll get back sent to the 501st it's what shock t tells him AZ tells him that he's actually set to be wiped memory and be sanitation at Camino. So what do you think is true here? Was Shock T lying to him or was it like that's what Shock T wants, but that the Kaminoans were going to do what they wanted? The Kaminoans are going to do what they wanted. That's what um, I thought too. Like, I feel like, I don't know. They, they always struck me as we're going to do what's best for our people and us in general, just, if that means aligning with the separatists, if that means lying and uh, to the Jedi and saying no, the separatists, no, you know more because uh, <laughs> the separatists need them. Um, yeah, I think that can they they are easily that in the wind. Whoever they think is more beneficial to their cause, they're just going to go with them at this point, which is really interesting to me, just because uh, why the clones were created and then then who they fall under and then the Republic or the people that are in command of them and then it's yeah. Very strange. But anybody can be bought and threatened. So Yeah. So Fives is like, I don't want that. He fights his way out of custody. Um, and he realizes that Nala Say switched the cases, right? So Shakti actually doesn't even have the right one. Um Fives and AZ escape. They jump out of the ship, but the ship is gonna be tracked and it's their it's their diversion. They decide to go back into uh to Polka City. And AZ kind of turns into this hover device, which is really cool. And uh, Five's able to jump on. 
Nalase calls Dooku again. He asks about Protocol 66. I assume that's Order 66, right? Uh, but AZ lures a clone into a trap so Fives can change into his armor. And they have to study the tumor. They want to make sure to see if it's something that was wrong with Django or if it is something else. And it does not match anything with Django's DNA. And it's actually not all natural. It's, it's foreign. And that's where they figure out that it is not really a tumor. It's, it is a chip and what they start calling an inhibitor chip. Fives thinks he has it as well, and he wants AZ to remove it, and he does. And uh, they mention how Tup was malf- uh, Tup's uh, chip was malfunctioned, and it looked black and rotting, while Fives looked normal, and that is why it went off early. Uh, and then we had uh, that they find out it happened when they were embryos, stage three embryos. All of those clones were altered. And uh, Anala say it gives them some BS about how the Jedi wanted this, right? Which she thinks is true, I guess. So it's not really um, a lie for her. But Anala say wants to terminate Fives immediately, while Shakti wants Fives to talk to the Chancellor. Which kind of ends up being the undoing here. Because... At the beginning, on their way to Coruscant, Nala Say is actually going to inject Fives with something, and that is what's going to cause him to spiral and end up causing his death here. Five says it's a Separatist plot, but Palpatine's like, a Separatist plot before the war, because you would have had this at an embryo. It doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. But it's exactly what it is, right? Because Palpatine controls both the Republic and the Separatists, so he <laughs> is, it is true. Yeah, he's gaslighting here, and he's like, "I'll want to speak to Fives alone," which the Jedi are dumb. Shakti should not I, leave. Yeah, him. I don't. Yeah, I don't understand this part. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> so Palpatine, for whatever reason, decides he's gonna tell Fives everything. Yeah, he does, and it makes Fives attack him, and he's like, "Oh, he's trying to kill me," and it, everybody falls for it. Uh, and five sounds crazy when he's telling it how high this goes up. (laughs) So I guess master plan from Palpatine there. Uh, Shakti talks to Mace Windu and, uh, Yoda and Anakin and Mace mentions that the Jedi have not been asked to help by Palpatine and Anakin's like, that's odd. It's like, yeah, no shit. That's odd. What are you talking about? Anakin will bring in Fives and they want him alive. So he decides he's going to go. We get Five taking a cab to a clone bar. Did you know these were a thing? A bar where all clones hang out? No, I do. Pretty cool. Uh, Especially the cab driver's insult. Did you catch what this was? Mm -mm. He says, your mother's a droid. When when they're giving, like when he doesn't, (laughs) when he doesn't pay for the thing and they all start like giving him a hard time the cab driver drives away he's like well your mother's a droid because i mean like i guess because the droid inseminated them or yeah. uh, the embryo i just thought that was a funny insult because it's like that, a, yeah. it's a your mom joke it is yeah it's your star wars your mama joke which people didn't like in the last jedi by the way but it's here it does exist in star wars uh five sees his friends kicks and jesse and he follows kicks to the bathroom uh, and is like, I need to talk to Rex or Skywalker. And Fives tells them about the inhibitor chips. That's when the Coruscant guards are arriving, and Fives starts telling the, them that the Chancellor is behind this, and, you know, Anakin's like, what, right before you kill, tried to kill him is when he told you this? And Anakin's not buying it. And Fives dies by the shot of a Coruscant guard. This is where I teared up again. This whole scene where Fives is dying in Rex's arms really got me. <laughs> We've seen Fives for so long. He's one of the first people we meet in this chronological yep. order, Logan. Yeah, it was like, it's all of them too. It's like, I mean, they all go bad. It's like we're, you know, Rex and eventually in them. It's just, yeah, I felt the same kind of sentiment though. It's like, geez, like just watching what they go through and, what some of these other clones had gone through that have abandoned the force, uh, the, you know, not the force, but the actual fighting force um, that, you know, you got the clones that were on the 
outer rim and everything else that just kind of been ship and you see what it does to them mentally. And then you look at this and, you know, these guys are still fighting in the war. Um, yeah, it is sad, especially cause they built such a connection with all of them. Yeah, that is, um, I, that, that's interesting. Uh, I can't wait for you to see how this goes for, for some of these characters <laughs> when order 66 happens. Cause I, I think you might be, um, shocked at times, but they end up saying that, uh, Palpatine and his doctors found a parasite causing the inhibitors to decay. And that is what made, I guess that's what Nala say injected into, uh, into fives. By the way, how does nobody question this? Because Fives didn't have his inhibitor chip, and his wasn't decayed. So sure. how how do you what how do you say anything about the parasite? Now you could say that the parasite was in Tup. I guess they were trying to say that without the inhibitor chip, Fives lost control. Right. Because um, they were trying to say push that a lot. Well, it makes you safer by having the inhibitor chip. Yeah, tell me what to do makes me safer. Uh, Nalase talks to Dooku. He has the chips. And Palpatine calls him to destroy the evidence. No one will be on our way to execute Order 66. We also get uh, Palpatine talking to the Jedi. And he has this great line of, Each day we grow closer and closer to victory. And he's got like this dark smile on. And I just wonder again, like the Jedi see him like with the dark smile and they're like, that's a total normal dude. <laughs> <laughs> he often talks to himself. It's very strange. <laughs> While we're sitting in the room. While we're him. sitting in the room. Of course, he's talking about the Republic getting closer to victory, but yeah. uh, he's talking about himself, obviously, right. and the Sith. But yeah, so that's that's the end of the this arc with fives so fives and echo were the only ones to have survived that rookies class and now echo died a few episodes ago i think during the saul guerrera stuff mm -hmm. um and then yeah tup uh tup is not part of that but he was part of the 501st and you have fives somebody that we had known since you know the, those clone cadets days before they were rookies and then he became a rookie and all that and uh he's dead now brutal sad pour one out for your clone brother and yeah next week we're talking an old friend the rise of clovis if you remember who clovis is that's the old friend and crisis at the heart um as we're going to be talking a, a padme arc here those are episodes five, six, and seven of season six. We only got three weeks left to season six, and then we're on to season seven already, um, as this is really winding down. Uh, any last thoughts about Order 66 or what you, uh, this arc, I guess, or what you expect to happen when Order 66 actually goes off? We will see it happen in this show, as like I said a million times. The last arc of season seven interacts pretty closely with Revenge of the Sith. I was gonna say, yeah. I think, I think I know going forward how it happens. I'm pretty sure that they are, they'll infiltrate everything. Um, as far as the separatists are concerned, something similar to this idea of of just getting into the brain and having it work like this. It'll be interesting to see how it ramps up with some of these characters too that are so heavily connected. Like I feel like Rex is always with Obi Wan um, or Anakin, and so kind of seeing that progress, and then also seeing. You know, I, I'm interested to see what kind of lead up they have for Padme. So I'm interested to see this next storyline because we don't get a whole lot of Padme beside the one. I feel like her running with Zero was the last one that we've gotten and really hadn't gotten too much as far as Padme is concerned. And she's such a big integral, you know, plot line and storyline and character arc in um, Revenge of the Sith. So I, I'm interested because I, I think there's going to have to be this idea of Padme also in the know, trying to protect Anakin, trying to protect herself kind of thing. So I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. I think there's a there's a lot of storylines that are, are kind of gray and cloudy, um, kind of like the dark side uh, that you just don't get in the films that I think we're going to get in this storyline here. So, Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, season six is just look. We do have a Jar Jar arc. All right, I will say there's a Jar Jar Mace Windu arc that's coming up. Oh no! Uh, it's right in Logan's wheelhouse. Oh yeah, but Love it. we also get some great stuff about Jedi Master Sifo Dyas, who originally put in the order for the clones, right? And we'll kind of get some information on how that happened. We'll get some stuff with Yoda having a good arc uh, at near the end of um, season six. And then, yeah, season seven is all pretty much, um, we get a nice introduction to the Bad Batch and all that. And, and and we've mentioned it before, but Bad Batch is going to be the next show that we tackle. And I think that's going to work very, very well. As somebody that just finished it, I, you know, I binged two and three, seasons two and three very recently. And seeing characters and storylines pop up from the Clone Wars and get resolved in, in Bad Batch, I feel pretty good about going in that order and kind of keeping our theme of chronological order instead of going release order, which would then be Rebels and then going back to Bad Batch. So I feel like for you, Logan, it'll hit better too because Clone Wars will still be more fresh in your mind when we get to some of those arcs that close up Clone Wars characters or storylines. And you won't have to probably look up as much on Wikipedia if, as if we did like a big gap. And then, yeah. and then you'll kind of know, like when we get to rebels and some of those characters appear again, you'll be like, Oh, I remember them from bad batch and how this progression has kind of continued type of thing. So feel good about that. But what we're actually going to do is right after we're done clone wars, we're going to do tales of the Jedi, um, which are six mini episodes, uh, three, Dooku based episodes and three Ahsoka based episodes that we'll take a look at before we move on to Bad Batch. But uh, yeah. Oh, also, do you know who is, do you, you remember who in the Tales of the Empire when you were seeing like trailers or anything about Tales of the Empire? Do you remember who one of the characters it focuses on? Mm -mm. Barris Afi. Oh, okay. So we will see Barris's story wow. continue from where we left off in Clone Wars in Tales of the Empire when we get to that. Interesting. So, That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. What happened to her after getting caught for bombing the Jedi say, Temple? Yeah. We'll see. All right. So yeah, they've been doing really cool with those tale shows and, and fitting in different uh, continuing stuff or wrapping up stuff. So it's it's been really great. All right, well, that's the end of this episode. Like I said, we're going to be talking episodes five, six, and seven next week. Those are the Clovis episodes of season six. You can con contact us at Pot Awakens on all of our social medias or long form emails, potawakens at gmail.com. You can like and subscribe to us here on the YouTube channel or rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It helps other people find the show. Enjoy the rest of your week, and we will catch you next time.